this is Tim from Your Six Tech. Today in this video, I'm going to show you how to fix the analog stick drift on your Xbox One controller. Now, if you do have some compressed air laying around, you could try cleaning it off and fixing the stick drift without opening up the controller by just manipulating this thumbstick and maybe lift it up and down like 10 to 15 times and rotate it around. But move this to the side and then spray or blow into here and remove any kind of dust or debris that's sitting on the sensors. But now in this video, I'm going to show you how to take apart the controller and then clean and repair that. So the first thing we want to do is to flip around our controller and then we have to remove these side panels. So these will sit on there like that. And then you just need to create a little separation and then remove them. So I would prefer using a plastic piece like this as opposed to like a flathead screwdriver or a flathead. And then you want to create some separation in here, just like that. And then you'll have to work your way down and then pop it off. Now, if you are using like a flathead or something like that, that can damage the controller. You can see I took a little bit of a chunk out there at one point. So just be prepared to damage your controller if you're using one of those. Then we have to remove the batteries. I already have them removed and I have most of the controller unassembled at this point, but we're going to have five different uh, screws that we have to remove and we need a T8 or a T9 screwdriver to remove those. So you'll have one right here. You'll have to break this little um, cover right here, remove it here, here on the side, and then we have five total. So you can see the screws right here. Now make sure you have these in a safe spot. If those go into the carpet, it's going to be a bad day. It's going to be difficult to find those. Now what we want to do is remove these covers. Now at this point, you can remove the thumbsticks as well. So depending on which one you're going to be cleaning out, you could also clean it up from here. So I got some rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. I could try cleaning it up without completely disassembling it. And then you can take your compressed air, spray into here from here, and just clean that up in case there's anything going on with that there. So we're going to take this part a little bit further now. And I'm going to remove this back cover now. And now it's going to get a little bit more tricky. So you can see I have this one cable here and I have a piece of plastic that's covering it like tape and we're going to need to remove this so we can get down further. So let's just lift this up and remember kind of where that goes but we're going to want to remove this little ribbon cable. So this will go over right here and then we want to lift up on this and remove this. So this is kind of just dangling here. Then we're going to have four screws right here, 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 and there. I believe this is a T6 screwdriver here. So let's remove all these screws now. All right, so I removed all the screws. I removed this tape and I lift it up here. Now we want to feed the thumbsticks through. So let's push up on it and this should pop off. And it's going to be a little bit difficult removing the board from the uh, triggers here. Just push back on them. They do bend a little bit backwards. Then we can flip this around and be careful on these wires right here. Otherwise, you're not going to have any vibrations or rumbles on your controller anymore. So now let's flip this around. And some pieces might fall off on you, like the headphone jack. This is just going to go in this position with the jack facing outward and all the metallic looking pieces upward. So that will go in that position. I'm just going to remove this now because we'll push it back into place later on. Now find the thumbstick that you've been having a problem with. So it could be the left one, it could be the right one. So in this video, I guess I'm going to go with the, I will go with the top left. So what we're going to want to do is open up these green pieces right here so you can see it. So we have two of them. So we have one on each side. And then what we can do is clean everything off. So you're going to want to get something with a good edge on it. And I would avoid using metal, but if you do have like a plastic piece that will open up this side right here, that will work so much better. But there is a little bit of gap right here that we can place this object into. And then we can slowly pry this back. And then you can work it on the other side here too. So you can see it's coming off already. It doesn't take a lot of force. And there's two little latches on each side, one here and one on the opposite side. And you can kind of peel this back and you can see this little sensor in here. So 
Now you can just remove it. So let's place this into here. I love these little tweezer things. And then we can remove it. And then we can just take this off. And we don't want to really bend this at all because this is important. And we want to place this to the side carefully. So you can see on the top, there's a small like little filament there or a little piece of um, copper. And if we bend that back, that will be a bad thing. So let's place this to the side down. Then grab some rubbing alcohol and our Q-tip. And I'm just gonna put this into the cap. I can take this rubbing alcohol and I can put this Q-tip right in the area that we went ahead and opened up. And if you have an old controller, you might get a bunch of gunk and debris on this. Now, I don't really use this controller all that much, but it looks clean, so let's just clean this off. And you might want to take some compressed air once we get everything reassembled and just dry it off. But then you can go into this area here too, just clean it all off. And then, let's do the same thing on the little piece we took up. So here it is. As you can see what it looks like, and it's not a whole lot, but just don't bend this back at all. You can see it pops up a little bit, so you can place your finger on the little black piece as you rotate this around and clean it. Just don't press down on it. And make sure you get off any kind of debris or gunk or black marks. It should just look metallic and reflective. All right. So you might want to be a little bit more thorough than me, but we can place this back in now. So let's grab this. And here's the piece. And we want to place it in with the rounded part up. So it's going to look like this. So you're going to see like these two little metallic edges facing down. And then we can place in here and the black side should be facing us. So I have it in there and it's really easy to see on my camera. So I'm zooming in and then I want to rotate this vertical. And then remove this device. And you can see it's going to line up with the little white piece. So let's get it aligned. Right about there. And then I should be able to close it. It looks like it's still locked. Alright, perfect. I have it seated well now. So that might take a little bit of tries just to line that well and then we can close this little door so let's close it up and you're gonna want to snap it into place so it's closed completely this may take a, a little bit of effort and some tries to get this seated well but there's two little clips on the side here we want to clip in so we might have to press on those and then snap it on There we go, it snapped in. So it seems like doing it with both fingers like this is the best to get both those sides to clamp back in. So now you can test this out and see if it's working well. And it may still stick on you like that. That is fine. The other side does that too. Until you get the thumbsticks back on, it's gonna do that. So now let's reassemble the controller. So let's take this and flip it back around and then get it under the triggers. Boom, boom. Then reseed this back in. Now we do have this headphone jack that we want to place back in. So the metallic side facing upwards. Place it right here. And it should sit in there. If you don't have this connected properly, you won't be able to use your headphones at all. Wired. Now, we want to look at this and align it. and. These two pieces right here, you can see the white pieces, those need to be aligned correctly because you have to push it and seat that in together. So you have to push down at it once you have those seated in. Boom. So you're going to feel it and it's going to be connected. Now let's put in the four screws that we took out before and just clamp this down so it doesn't move around on us when we're reseating this little black piece. And you might want to actually bring this back up to the top here because it's difficult to see right there. So here it is. So we want this on the top as well. 
boom, there it is. Now let's get those screws back in. Once again, this will be a T6, and you might have an issue with the vibrations right here, the rumble pack. Those might pop off on you, but you just have to seat them into place on the left or the right side. Okay, and now the fun part. We have to put that little black cable back on the board. So we have to find out where we need to connect that. And you're going to be able to see where it connects because it's going to be this little circle right here. And that's going to be a little bit difficult to connect. And it seems like if you use your fingernail, that's going to be the best way to align it and then press down and then reconnect it. So let's just align it. And it's going to be very difficult to see, but that's what it looks like. So use your other hand, position it. Push down with your fingernail. I was able to get it in by using my left finger right here and just positioning it and then pressing down with my fingernail. So you see this and it's gonna be difficult. It might take you about five to 10 minutes to get that, but you eventually will. And then we can take this plastic piece and we can put it back over everything. So it kind of sat like this before. So let's just clamp this down. And I don't think it's really super important the way you put it back in. We just want to make sure that it's preventing this little cable from wobbling around and disconnecting. And on the Xbox Series X controller, yeah, this is not on there. And if your controller is older, this little filament or tape is probably going to be useless because it's not going to even be sticky anymore. So now we want to completely reassemble the controller. So let's get the covers, put those back on. So here's the front cover. And we can put our thumbsticks back on now. And at any point you want to replace your thumbsticks, it's so easy to do that. And then let's place these back in. And then place the front cover back on. Flip it over and then get the rear cover. And there's one thing with the rear cover we need to do correctly. So we got these little areas for the, uh, the battery, we want to make sure it's on the inside of this cover. So we have to align this and make sure both those are inside. So you can see they're going to be on the inside here. Sometimes you'll be placing this cover back on and they're on the, the other side of the cover. And when you pull all the screws in and you put your batteries in, you're like, oh, well, that's not going to work. So let's just align this now and then put all the screws back in. So you got one here, 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 and here. So five total. And we are gonna be using a T8 or a T9 security screwdriver now. All right, so here's my last screw and make sure your screws are firmly tightened. Otherwise your cover is gonna feel a little bit wobbly when you're moving around the controller. So you can look at all the gaps here and see if there's a huge gap between those or not and just make sure everything is clamped down tight then you can put your batteries back in and then you can put on the side cover. So let's just put these back in real quick and then you can test out your controller to see if you have a battery connection. So we got that back on. Boom, let's put these covers back on. These covers should just snap down into place easy. The most annoying things about this is just having them on the wrong side and not realizing it. So snap it down, then test out your controller. See if it's working now. But hopefully this quick little video did indeed help you out. If it did, leave it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. For more tech up videos, coming up next on Your Six Tech.